Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very good evening to all of you. Okay, let's start today's class. Uh, <clears throat> we are on the page number 18 of the book Learning How to Learn. Now you try. Make your own neurons. You can make your own neurons and brain links. The simplest approach to making a model set of brain links is to take a strip of construction paper and glue the, end, the ends together. Then, take a new strip and thread, uh, and thread it through the first one, now a closed circle. Then glue the ends of the second strip together. This can be repeated until your number of brain links reaches its desired length. More advanced craf uh, crafters can use pipe cleaner, uh, cleaners and beads of different sizes, making sure that the pipe cleaners can fit through the beads. Use the pipe cleaners to form the axon, the, uh, the bottoms, which are the fingers at the end of the axon, the dendrites and the dendrites spines. The small balls on the ends of the dendrites spine can be represented by the small beads. The neuron's eye, the nucleus, can be a large bead. Making your own neurons is a great way to remember all the different parts. By lining your neurons up axon to dendrites, you can better understand how the neurons talk to one another. Okay, a neuron mystery. Back when Santiago Romani Cajal was around, in the late 1800s, scientists didn't know that the brain was made of individual neurons. Scientists thought that maybe neurons joined to one another to form a network. This network was spread throughout the brain like a spider web. Scientists believed the brain was a single spider web linked network of neurons because electrical signals flowed so easily between different parts of the brain. How could signals flow so easily if they had to jump from one neuron to another neuron? So the problem was that it was hard to see that was what was going on. Microscope weren't good enough to see whether there were any gaps between neurons. The spider web theory seemed uh, reasonable at that, at that time. But Santiago thought um, that there were special gaps between neurons. He believed the gaps were just too small to see. Santiago proposed that signals jumped across the gap a little like electri ele electrical spark, similar to how our neuron aliens send signals by sparking one another. Santiago was right, of course. Now, we can see the synaptic gap um, with new tools that are better than old-fashioned macroscope. Today, neuroscientists can listen to neurons uh, chit-chatting in the brain. The electrical waves are easy to see using cool technology like the EEG. It's like watching ocean waves uh, swooshing along. Can you see here? This is EEG. So these are the like, uh, like wave. You can see like wave. Above is a person with EEG sensors on his head. This is called EEG sensors. Uh, below are some of the EEG waves his brain is making. Okay, These are the waves his brain is making. We love metaphors. Can you tell that we like to use metaphors? A metaphor is a comparison between two things. One thing is something you are familiar with, like an ocean wave. The other thing is something you may not be familiar with like an electrical wave. Metaphors allows you to connect with what you already know to the new concepts you are learning. This helps you learn faster. Obviously, an electric wave is not the same as an ocean wave, a neuron is not a space alien, and a dendritic spine is not a tau. They just share some similarities. Okay, Coming, uh, coming up with a creative metaphor is one of the best ways to learn a new concept or share an important idea. That's why some metaphors have meaning in every language, like the uh, Swahili proverb, wisdom is wealth. Great writers are known for their metaphors. Have you ever heard Shakespeare's lines, all the, words, all the world is a stage, you are the actor. When you think of a metaphor, a, tra a trail in your brain is activated. Yes, this trail is the set of brain links you saw before. The trail, like pooch, allows you to more easily do complex thinking about the real concept. Just by thinking of a metaphor, you have started understanding the thought, uh, the, the, the tougher concept. Metaphor helps you to get it faster. Faster. All this related to something called ne uh, neural reuse theory. You are reusing ideas you have already learned to assist you in learning new ideas. Usually, at some level, a metaphor stops working. For example, space aliens shocking each other is a metaphor that doesn't explain syn uh, synapses well. 
If you look more closely, when a metaphor doesn't seem to work anymore, you can just throw it away. You can find a new metaphor to assist you in understanding more deeply. You can also use different metaphors to help you understand a single idea. That's just what we have done with you when we have said that the that a connected set of neurons is like a set of brain links or like a mouse path in the forest in a forest. Okay. A metaphor helps you understand a new idea by connecting it to something you already know. Whenever a metaphor doesn't work or, or breaks down, you can just throw it away and get new one. Okay, so if, if this metaphor is not working, just throw it away. This metaphor is working. Yes, that's good. Good metaphor. Just adopt it. In our books, you will you, you will meet many metaphors: zombies, links, mice, and octopuses. We use the metaphors to give you a better sense of the science. Remember, metaphors are just handy ways of helping you understand key ideas. Don't worry if your metaphor seems strange. Okay? Sometimes we hear uh, wackier metaphors open your mind to the new ideas you are trying to learn. Wacky metaphors are usually memorable too. Okay, now, you try understanding a metaphor. We mentioned two metaphors. Wisdom is wealth. All the world is a stage. Take a minute to think about these examples. Is their, man, is their meaning clear to you? See if you can put these metaphors in, into other words. If not, you can check the in, uh, end notes for an explanation. Okay. Now, Santiago Raman Y. Kajal. So how did Santiago become such an incredible scientist? It wasn't easy. Uh, Santiago's dad realized that his son needed a different approach. His dad got him interested in medicine by showing him what real bodies looked like. How? The pair went off secretly at night to find bodies in graveyards. This was back in 1860s. They did things differently back then. Do not try this today. Santiago started drawing parts of the body. Being able to see, touch and draw what he was learning about captured his interest. Santiago decided to become a doctor. He went back to the mathematic, mathematics and science studies he had missed when he was young. This time, he paid attention. He worked hard to build the proper trails in his brain that he hadn't built when he was younger. He finally became a doctor. He was interested in all types of cells, so he decided to try to become a professor of pathology. That's, uh, that is a professor who is an expert in telling the difference between healthy and sick body tissues. This is done by running tests on them uh, that includes looking at them closely through a microscope. For this, Santiago had to pass an important test. He studied hard for a year and, had, and he failed. So he studied hard for another year and he failed again. He finally passed on the third attempt. He is the Santiago. Santiago Romani Carroll, always ahead of his time, shown here around 1870, taking one of the world's first selfies. Wow. Note, you cannot see his right hand because it's, uh, it's pushing the button to take the picture. Ah. Santiago cared a lot about young people. He even wrote a book for them, Advice for a Young Investigator. Okay, Santiago went out to draw beautiful pictures of all the neurons he saw through his microscope. His atlas of neurons is still the starting point, point for modern studies of neurons. But there was a problem. Santiago wasn't a genius and he knew it. He often wished he were, he, he were smarter. He stumbled over his word and he forgot details easily. But his research on neurons showed him that he could retain his brain. Efforts to learn subjects like math and science gradually changed his abilities in those areas. By slow, steady practice, he could make new links, changing the structure of his brain. That's how he changed from a young troublemaker to a famous scientist. Today, today's scientific research confirms what Santiago discovered. We can, call, we can all think ourselves smarter. Learning makes us smarter. And learning how to learn is one of the best things you can do to get the ball rolling and make learning more successful. This is the most important idea in this book. So keep reading. Later, we will meet Santiago again and we will discover more about why he could outthink geniuses despite his limited brain power. Okay. So I think we are just enough. This is just enough for today or not? Yes, it's enough. Okay, to tomorrow, uh, like uh, from next week, inshallah, we'll continue it from here. Yes. Okay, thank you for joining me. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.